Once again, my, my apology, let's start again. My name is Jaroslav Bracet, and let's start second time. Well, uh, Cotene word. Cotene uh, word is pretty competitive, and uh, there are contradicting requirements. On the one side, we expect to have uh, very small, tiny containers, because you know they, are, they have a um, small attack surface, and they does not need many upgrades. On the other hand, we also expect some features easy to use. From the software management, what it means? It means I should be still able to install software. I should be uh, able to download uh, software from remote repositories. And not only what I need, but also all the dependencies. And well, at the end, I really need to check whether my Update, my container is still secure or doesn't need any updates. It's not only important to think about what you need, but when. Because what's the lifetime of, uh, uh, of containers? Well, for example, Fedora or Red Hat released a new update for the container. What do you do? Well, you install to that container your software, you add your setting, and when everything works, then you create a golden image. After that point, well, you will not expect to install anything else because when you would like to update your container, you will not update the container, but you will rebuild the container. So after, after a certain point, some of the functionality is not needed. And then maybe you can do something about that. Well, if we want to remove some of the functionality and keeping, what about to think that, what about to move that functionality outside? It means for the software management, let's, uh, up, uh, let's handle software management externally. One other option would be to use uh, podman mount command. It's pretty easy to use. Uh, it does not need DNF and RPM inside the container. You everything manage uh, outside from the host. How it works? It's pretty easy. You know, you start with the uh, podman unshare, then you mount uh, your container, and then you use the DNF directly from your host, uh, and using install root, then, uh, and you can perform here everything what you have. You can install software, you can check for the updates, you can download updates, as I said, anything or what you like. Then you commit your changes, and you have a new image, and then you can check what you have. Yeah, you can uh, yeah, run uh, you, you can run a command uh, like normal for the, for the command. And you can ensure that uh, what you install is there. Well, I pick uh, for the example ACPI for the, let's say, two basic re uh, reason. It doesn't have uh, many dependencies and it's not updated in Fedora. It means that once I build a container, I usually don't trigger update for the ACPI, but I will trigger update for other reasons. For example, one of the components has a security issue inside the containers, and I cannot present that the you know, container is second anymore because I see advisory attached to that. Well, but there are some limitations of that approach. Well, let's just focus on the RPM. RPM is not one product that you can simply change from one major version of the distribution or from distribution or from another build because there are, for example, different backends. RPM in past used, uh, for example, to store information about installed software into Berkeley DB. Right now, it uh, uses uh, SQLite. It might trigger if you use uh, another backend warning. That's quite fine. It just tell you, well, I am switching a backend or worse, it tell you, I am switching the backend and the database is only read-only. Another problem that you might experience is that path to the database. Path to the database is written in the RPM macro. It's always the macro, macros are always taken from the host. Therefore, if you have uh, another uh, version, then you might look into different direction. You will see, you know, nothing is installed in the container. Well, bad luck. And there are other, thing, uh, other things. For example, from RHEL 7, you will have a difficulty 
to install many packages on RHEL 8 just because there are different set of the features and so on. Therefore, the disadvantage of that approach is that you have to use the not only same major version of the RPM, but you have to use that version from the same major version of uh, your distribution. It means you can use any version of RPM from RHEL 9 to any container to the RHEL 9 because there is ensured uh, compatibility, but don't mix from the RHEL 7, 8, or 9. Yeah, it's not ensured and it's not recommended. Well, let's think that it's another way. Let's think that we have a containers. We build the containers for the one good reason. We want to have an independent environment and we want to run there something. What about to use software management from another container? Then the problem with the host is not so big. The first part is what do you need? What do you need to pass the all required information from one container to another container? And then the second part is that, for example, if I want to install something, then in servicing container, I can download and I can uh, uh, copy this uh, or make these RPMs available for the micro container. Therefore, let's think about the complex of the two containers that are, has a part, or that are part of the same family. Like uh, in our example, I use Fedora and Fedora minimal container, but it can be UBI 9 and UBI uh, macro 9, a uh, micro. Well, important part, RPM DB. This is the part where you store all the information about uh, um, installed software. You don't need to share installed files. You just only need to uh, get information what is in RPM DB. And also, you need to copy from the, or it's good to share information about the setting. It means in etc DNF, there is a, setting for the uh, repository, oh, for, the, for the DNF handling, and definition of the repositories. That my, it might happen that a uh, set of the repositories in your, in your container differs from the repositories of the uh, servicing containers. Well, if you want to install something to the micro container from uh, and using a servicing container. We can split that uh, approach into three steps. The fir one, first one would, would be share, then the resolve inside the servicing container, and the install part or build part for the, uh, uh, for the um, new micro container. Well, here I provide the few commands how you can test that, that this approach works. In the first command, I copied from the Fedora minimal uh, RPM DB and also a configuration from the ATC to the some temp directory. In the second command, well, I run servicing container. In this case, is uh, Fedora 38. Uh, and I try to resolve uh, dependency to install again a CPI and download all of the required uh, uh, RPMs using DNF install and that operation is redirected to the install route. And of course, there is the last part. I mean, building the container, the new container uh, using downloaded files. It means I just only built uh, from Fedora Minimal and I copied all required RPMs using RPM. I mean, I don't need to use a DNF or micro DNF to perform these operations. Okay, it's not nice, it is just only test that only copy uh, of few items from your container to servicing containers allow you to run. Download everything what you need, check for the updates, check for the security updates, and that's all. If we use that model and bind these two containers together, we can use a uh, little bit smarter approach. We can mount 
directly one container to another container. Um, it means we can merge first two steps, share and resolve, into one step. It's much easier, and uh, you only do that you run a container, the big one, Fedora 38, and you mount then there, small container, in this case, uh, Fedora Minimal, and you uh, run again inside the servicing container what you need, and you just only use the install route to the location where you mount inside the container another container. And the second step is the sa exactly the same that you built, downloaded, uh, you build the container using the downloaded RPMs. Well, the only, um, there are similar pros, like we, uh, with the first example, it's, it's quite easy to use, it's not so easy, uh, and you don't need DNF and RPM inside a container, with the one exception. Yeah, you need inside the container RPM to install things. This still requires to have RPM inside, or you can use the, the procedure from the first step that you can mount and update from the host, but there is the same disadvantage. Well, this approach, use, uh, it means use uh, servicing containers to perform some software management uh, procedures, allow us you know, to, for the new things. Well, you can, for example, use uh, uh, the same approach to check for the updates for the UBI macro using UBI container. And uh, UBI macro doesn't contain RPM or DNF. Therefore, you can use that directly and you will have answer whether you have to rebuild uh, your micro image or not. And, well, if we accept that we can use a servicing container for the software management, we can also use uh, another approach. We can try to think how to remove unneeded software from our uh, image before we make it golden. It means, as I mentioned, the life cycle is important. You build your software, you install it, you build a uh, container, you install what you need, you setting, and then there are many things that you don't need. Therefore, you can trim some things. This command is only searching for all of your dependencies of your application. In this uh, example, uh, I, I add uh, ACPI because we need it, and also I would like to keep in container bash and core utils for the good things because I would like to keep some basic functionalities. And if we accept that, as a right way how to manage your containers, then we can do this. We can try to build our container from the big, big container, like Fedora 38. We can install what you need. Then we can remove all unneeded dependencies, including DNF and even RPM. Therefore, the image will be very, very small. And very, very small image means no rebuild or minimalization of the rebuilds. And, well, what about to try something? Okay, we will see. Okay. As you can see, this is exactly the example that I pre uh, presented uh, uh, from the last slide. This is, we use Fedora 38 container, we install a CPI, and then we clean the cache, and, and as a last step, um, it uh, removes all of the unneeded dependencies. Okay, here's the command that I will use. It's simply, it's just only built container. It squash all of the layers just to make it smaller. And uh, then uh, it's also tagged. Uh, um, therefore, let's run. Okay, we will see. It might take ages, therefore, let's wait.
whether we will have at the end a container. What's the size of the containers? Uh, Fedora 38 containers has about close to the 200 megabytes. Uh, Fedora minimal has, uh, no, let's say, half, because uh, there is no Python. And micro containers. OK. I, I, I was not sure what's the reaction, but this is for the Python or what's just <laughs> behind me. OK. Uh, it means software management requires a lot of dependencies. Uh, DNF requires RPM. Uh, OK, that's essential. But also it requires Python. And also it requires curl. And curl uh, is not so small, even in containers where you have a curl minimal. OK, we have it. And let's, let's try. My apology, I will take another glass. You know, it's so annoying to type something and you don't know what. <laughs> okay. Let's try. Is it better? Okay. And thank you very much that you mentioned that. OK, let's run ACPI from the container. OK, it says, ah, I have still some battery inside. OK, it's working. OK, let's try. Oops, RPM is not there. OK, and let's try to see what we have inside. And OK, if I want to see what is installed inside, I have to use a servicing container, or I have to look from the host. And I will use that command that mount my new image to the Fedora 38, and I will try to investigate what we have there. OK, then okay, this is the list. OK, it's long list uh, for the container. And anyway, this was the containers that we started with. And then let's redirect. And we share it, uh, or I, I, I mount um, the container to something like that. And OK. It's not helping. Let's do it one game. As you can see, the list of the installed RPMs is pretty, pretty short. What, are these, what does it mean? Let's look for the images. OK, the original size of the container was 187. We installed the software, and we end up with a container that has only 52 megabytes. Well, then we can jump to the summary. Well, as I demonstrate, Containers might be even smaller than we have right now if we will adopt a new approach. That approach means that we can use some software management 
uh, tools from another container or from the host. It allows us to build smaller, secure containers that will not require so many rebuilds. And that's basically my message. Therefore, thank you very much for listening. And I am really glad that my demo works. That was the first one. <laughs> OK, any question? OK. OK, question was whether uh, I try to remove the size of the image by removing additional things like documentation uh, or other subunit, uh, uh, sub parts of the core utils. The, first of all, my example start well, with the uh, Fedora uh, container. It means that inside this container, many things uh, were already removed. It means there is no, there are no documentation. Curl is installed, for example, uh, in version Curl minimal. Therefore, it's already there. What can be still done, for example, is that we can uh, remove, for example, uh, content what is in DNF uh, persis there. It's about five megabytes. It contains right now information about uh, from which repository. Uh, package was installed, some hashes, and uh, also uh, reason. Therefore, by removing that, you will spare another 10%. That's what I can recommend. If you want to uh, install packages uh, without documentation, there is the option in DNF uh, as well in RPM. It means no docs. And um, well, that's all what I have for your question. Any other question? Okay, there. I think. Oh. Uh, well, uh, let's repeat the question. Can. can uh, can we install or can we uh, build a container from the green field? It means start uh, uh, from, the, from the zero. Well, actually, uh, I think that approach is used for building the containers. But to be honest, I haven't tried that. In theory, you can open any container. You can delete everything. <laughs> And then uh, uh, continue like that, and squash all of the layers. Go on. Well, the question is whether it's possible to do something similar with uh, other, uh, other distributions like Ubuntu. Uh, in theory, I use mostly functionality from Podman. And Podman is uh, upstream, and is the past upstream is the same for the Ubuntu and uh, Fedora. Therefore, if uh, these managers provides to handle or to use uh, install root, I mean to redirect to another location your uh, uh, software management tool. It would be possible to also use the same approach or very similar approach with uh, other software management tools. Yeah. I have experience uh, uh, with uh, uh, Zipper, but be honest, I'm, I, I don't know whether uh, the something like uh, install option is there available because I didn't, did not need that. Thank you very much for the question. Another question? OK. 
Okay. There is no other question. Thank you very much for listening. And and have a nice day. <laughs>